Good evening. You're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Edna Zer. And I'm Bo Leung. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Health Chief Ko Eng Man said the relationship between the administration and the legislature is getting worse. LegCo meeting adjourned again due to lack of quorum. Wrap up warm as the mercury is expected to dip to single digits overnight. Health Chief Ko Eng Man says the relationship between the administration and the legislature is getting worse. Ko added that he is worried the situation will affect the government's policy initiatives from going ahead. This was the scene in 2014 during a Lech Co Finance Committee meeting when the government requested funding for two new towns in the Northeast New Territories, which is opposed by many pan democratic lawmakers, was passed. In the past few months, also in the Legislative Council building. The bell for quorum calls became a familiar sound as pan Democrats used it as a filibustering tactic during some government policy debates. Speaking during ATV's Newsline program, Health Chief Koeng Man said the relationship between the administration and the legislature is not looking good. It seems to be getting worse to me uh, because um, I'm getting more and more worried. Uh, some of the uh, uh, legislative um, initiative of my under my bureau, as well as some of the um, policy initiative, um, we need to await clearance from the uh, legislative council, both uh, the main council, as well as his financial committee. With just more than a year left in office during this administration, Ko said he hopes to see a string of policy initiatives given the green light, including the regulation of the private collaborium, setting up of a sustainable agricultural development fund and food safety bills could reach international standards. Responding to the long-term problem of a manpower shortage in the public sector, Ko said the hospital authority has overall been able to maintain a reasonable turnover rate amongst the doctors, around 4.3 to 4.4 percent, compared to more than 5 percent two to three years ago. But Ko admitted that manpower may be a contributing factor to medical blunders in the public sector. I think. Um Admittedly, it's difficult for any system to attain uh, zero errors or zero mistake. Um, the uh, phenomenon that we observe can be due to a lot of reasons. I cannot deny that uh, some, under some situation there might be manpower problem, training problem. Uh, some uh, cases might be related to uh, a uh, personal uh, 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 over. Uh, uh, a, a mistake. The health minister, who had to take a couple of days off due to a nasty fall during a running event last month, said he has fully recovered. Ko told us more about his tumble. Were you trying to avoid the child or did you not see him when you were uh, just from the starting line? Might be, because uh, you know, uh, it all happened you know, in split seconds. So, uh, People always ask me, but it's very difficult for me to analyze. Uh, an accident is an accident. Um, but it, it, it might be true that I, I, as a reflex, I try to avoid uh, uh, harming the child. You can watch the full interview here on ATV World, Sunday night at 8 p.m. A meeting to discuss the copyright amendment bill in LegCo was adjourned again due to a lack of quorum. This was in spite of a new strategy against filibustering adopted by pro-government lawmakers. Vicky Wan reports. A rare moment was seen this morning during the debate on the copyright amendment bill when a number of pro-establishment lawmakers walked out of the chamber in unison. This is the new measure they have adopted in an effort to counter the pan-democrats' filibustering by countless quorum calls. For each call, 15 minutes are given to lawmakers to return to the chamber and make up the minimum headcount of 35 needed to continue a meeting. 
Pro-establishment lawmakers tried to allow only one call per hour by using the first 40 minutes of the call to handle personal business, returning to the chamber before the time was up and then staying there for the rest of that hour. As a result, less member counting was seen when the council resumed discussing a motion moved by Labour Party lawmaker Sid Ho. Ho's motion, which was tabled shortly after yesterday's second reading of the bill, was for it to be referred to a select committee. But unionist Ten Kapil said that just amounted to another form of filibustering. Independent lawmaker Raymond Wong suggested adjourning the meeting. But this was rejected by acting Lech co-president Andrew Leung. But there was a dramatic twist seven minutes before the meeting was set to end. The quorum bell rang again, but the hand count was still short after 15 minutes, so the meeting had to be adjourned. This is the third time the debate has been adjourned for lack of quorum since December. After the adjournment, Commerce and Economic Development Secretary Grasso hit out at the Pan Democrats for wasting the legislature's time. I mean, I think that everyone should ask the question, who is to blame if not the Pan Democrat legislative member who chose to be absent from this chamber, which is designed for them to be there to debate, to abdicate their responsibility is, is it something that they should be doing? I think the citizens of Hong Kong should ask that question. So stress that the government has no plans to shelve the legislation. People Power legislator Albert Chen, who is one of the prominent quorum callers, said Chief Secretary Carrie Lam should sit in the meeting with her pro-government colleagues if they are determined to pass the bill. In the next few months, you know, they will be forced to continue to sit here on a continual basis. I mean, uh, you, know, uh, you know, she can force the pro-establishment councillor uh, you know, to torture themselves, but uh, she herself is sitting comfortably you know, in her office. You know, that is hypocrite. Meanwhile, ex-ho convener Lam Wun Kong said the bill has been dragging on for too long. Well, I think uh, since the bill has actually gone through a very uh, comprehensive consultation process, uh, which has actually taken quite a few years, and actually incorporated quite a number of the uh, concerns of the users, I think it is a reasonably balanced bill, and I hope that uh, it could be passed. The debate will be resumed next Wednesday. Vicky Wen, ATV News. Hong Kong continued to shiver today as the mercury is expected to plunge to single digits overnight. The cold weather warning remains in force and the chilly conditions are expected to last a few more days. Many people who stepped outside early this morning might have felt a chill in the air. In Takuling, farmers won't be too happy to see the damage the cold has done to their crops, as many of them are frosted over. Across the city, students, commuters and office workers bundled up to go about their daily business. This student said she didn't want to get out of bed this morning. When my alarm clock goes off, I usually just get up, but not today, said this girl. The floor was so cold when I got out of bed. The cold weather warning remained in force as the Hong Kong Observatory predicted the mercury to drop even lower over the next few days. That's because of an intense cold surge in southern China. And according to forecasters, temperatures could plummet to 5 degrees in the new territories on Monday. The Home Affairs Department has been opening temporary shelters for those seeking refuge during the bitter weather. The cold snap has also taken its toll on the elderly, with dozens being admitted to hospital for various weather-related ailments. The Senior Citizen Home Safety Association said it received more than 550 telephone calls between midnight and noon today from people worried that their health will be affected by the falling temperatures. The government has reminded people to wrap up warm to beat the cold. Customs officers have arrested nine people in a crackdown on stores selling counterfeit goods to tourists in Mong Kok. The case is said to be the largest of its kind in three years, with about $5 million worth of items seized. Corinne Young has more. The Customs and Excise Department engaged 120 officers in the operation on Thursday. 
over 10,000 counterfeit items and $200,000 in cash, including foreign currencies, were seized. The luxury products, including watches, wallets and handbags, are worth about $5 million in total. Their prices were marked at about 30 percent of the genuine ones. Officers said the syndicates were very careful and only catered to tourists, and efforts to track down the supply will continue. As we discover that these, um, these crimes involve a, a well-organized syndicate, we are going to um, investigate on the crime proceeds as well as the supply of the goods. And if we can successfully make use of the uh, organized and serious crimes ordinance, we will seek to enhance the sentence on these syndicate members. In the operation, six storage places, an upstairs showroom and six hawker stalls were raided. It's estimated that this business generated a profit of more than $40,000 every day. Two of the nine arrested, a man and a woman, are believed to be the masterminds. Some of the members have a tried background. Officers said this case is the largest of its kind in three years. Karen Yang, ATV News. A dump truck driver has died after he was buried by mud and sand from his own vehicle. But First Education Secretary Eddie Ng says a territory-wide system assessment review report will be available next month, Karen Young reports. The Territory-Wide System Assessment, or TSA, has drawn widespread criticism for bringing an exempt drilling culture and pressure to the candidates. In response, the working groups under the TSA Review Committee suggested the Bureau only pick 10 percent or 50 of the local schools through a sampling process. The groups also suggested that the questions could be more straightforward. Asked about the recommendations, Education Minister Eddie Ng only said there's no conclusion yet and he will let the committee members do their work. The committee is expected to submit a report next month. A dump truck driver died after a freak accident, where he was buried by mud and sand from his own vehicle. At about 10 a.m., police and firefighters were called out to Chengkwan O landfill to rescue the man. He was found unconscious and later declared dead at Chengkwan O hospital. Police said the man's truck apparently malfunctioned. Two people were injured in a three-car pile-up at about 8 a.m. in Changsha Wan. A car lost control near Tongking Street West and Lincheng Road and rammed into two other vehicles. The car then tumbled and burst into flames. The blaze was put out and the two who sustained minor injuries were taken to hospital. Karen Yang, ATV News. Overseas, thousands of women in Yemen took to the streets to protest against the ongoing civil war. But first in France, police used tear gas to stop migrants from trying to cross the Channel Tunnel into Britain. Lee Faulkner reports. Tear gas was fired at a group of migrants in the French town of Calais as police tried to stop them from reaching the road leading to the Channel Tunnel. Thousands of refugees are camped in an area known as the Jungle, waiting for a chance to cross the English Channel by hiding in lorries and trains before they enter the tunnel. They believe a better life awaits them in Britain than they would have in mainland Europe. Although the French government has promised to provide more permanent accommodation to replace the makeshift camp, the number arriving at the camp continues to grow, outpacing these plans. The camp is a source of tension with local residents and has attracted the attention of far-right politicians. In Yemen, thousands of women took to the streets of the capital Sana'a to protest against the Saudi-led coalition airstrikes that have been going on for nearly a year and have caused a humanitarian crisis. According to the UN, about 6,000 people have died and 2 million displaced by the fighting. Children are getting killed, women are dying, and they have not reacted or done anything about it, said this protester. Yemen's warring factions, with the Saudi-led coalition trying to oust the Iran-backed Houthis, were due to meet again earlier this month in a bid to end the conflict. But the talks were postponed following Saudi Arabia's execution of Shiite cleric Sheikh Nima al nimr and attacks on the Saudi embassy in Tehran. People in the northeast of the U.S. are bracing themselves for a storm that's already been called historic before it's even arrived. We're predicting that the um, more than 50 million people will be uh, uh, affected uh, by the uh, snow event alone. 
and um, we're now working very carefully with uh, the emergency management community. A state of emergency has been declared by Washington, D.C.'s Mayor Muriel well, Bowser. I I, I Similar declarations here. were made in five neighboring states. Uh, Schools were closed and government workers are to be sent home at midday. The storm is expected to hit late on Friday, with about 60 centimetres of snow predicted. High winds may further aggravate the situation by causing blizzards and whiteouts. Lee Faulkner, ATV News.